I think that the poverty story this year and the income story as well is probably more important than usual, as I mentioned. This is the sixth time we've done this. And in some way, this is, uh, you know, I feel like we're on the edge of some actual uh, action on the part of the Congress and the new administration, whichever administration it might be. Uh, first of all, we appear to be either heading into or in a recession. Of course, poverty and unemployment and concern for low-income people is always highest during, uh, during difficult economic times. Uh, also, a very interesting thing is that the long-term interest in the poverty measure itself and how bad it is, there now seems to be universal agreement that it's absolutely a rotten, lousy measure. Uh, the trends are probably revealing, but the accuracy of the measure in any given year is not very good. We've known this for a long time. Many of you probably know there was a National Academy report in 1995, so we're you know, way beyond that. Uh, but this year, for the first time, there does seem to be a lot of attention to this, to the, to the measure itself. Bills have been introduced in Congress. I know that there are several bills that are now in preparation in Congress. Uh, New York City uh, actually stepped boldly forth and came up with a measure that we think is a pretty good measure. We're a little bit biased because we helped them develop it, especially Becky Blank here. Uh, and Mike Laracy played a role as well. He'll talk about that in a few minutes. And then, of course, uh, John Edwards and Katrina brought a lot of attention to poverty. It was amazing to me, I don't know about you, about how much people did pay attention to poverty. I thought the Edwards uh, campaign would never get that much attention, and it did get a fair amount of attention. And then, of course, uh, Ka Katrina really brought a lot of attention to poverty. And then, finally, we have a Democratic Congress. I think it's clear, at least in the sense of government programs, that Democrats are much more willing to create programs to do something about poverty. They've already introduced a lot of legislation. Chairman Louise the Means Committee has talked about major new legislation. Uh, and it's possible, I'd say it's, you know, it's a little bit above 50-50 at this point, that we would also have a Democratic president. Uh, and if that happens, then, of course, both the House and the Senate and the presidency would be controlled by Democrats. So you put all that together, and I think poverty could be quite an important motivating uh, factor in this city in the year ahead. So that brings special attention uh, to this report. So here's how we're going to organize the day. I'm going to give just a brief summary without any real interpretation. I'm going to say a little, maybe a little uh, political thing at the end. Uh, and then we're going to have panelists. We have panelists that represent different perspectives. Uh, and each of them are going to speak briefly for seven minutes. Uh, and then I'm going to ask them some penetrating, wonderful questions. Uh, and then we will turn to the audience and give the audience uh, an opportunity to ask questions. So that's our plan for the day. So here we go. First, poverty, as I'm sure you already know, actually uh, was, was, did not increase significantly overall, but children's poverty did increase. And for those of us here at Brookings who study poverty, that probably is at least as important, if not more important, than the overall poverty measure, that children's poverty is something we're really concerned about, and it did increase significantly this year, so that's an important part uh, of this story. So children's poverty is up. And then we always are interested in poverty in female-headed families, both because the rate among female-headed families here is so much higher than the rate among all families. What is going on in my camera? It doesn't show on the screen. There's a flaw here. What about that one? Look at this. It's okay here. Can you? It doesn't show on there, does it? Okay, well, so much for that. Um, so you're, it's, this is a burden on you now. You've got to figure this out without the little red dot. Maybe you could ask the person on your right, I would suggest. Uh, so child poverty is always much higher in female-headed families. As all of you know, welfare reform was a major effort in this city over the last decade and a half, and I notice that even Barack Obama now is laying claim to playing some role in uh, uh, in the welfare reform bill, but the point was to make mothers work and then subsidize them once they worked, and that strategy was somewhat successful, as you can see. It's, I would call it the most successful poverty reduction strategy we ever had, except for giving money to the elderly through Social Security, which really caused poverty to plunge even more. But you can see that very substantial decline. But since 2000, the story has not been great. Poverty has been increasing among female-headed families, and since they're already much more likely to be uh, in poverty, and since we have so many more female-headed families every year and a higher share of our kids, we now have something like 27% of our children female-headed families. This is a very important figure, uh, and that it, I, I did not see a statistical test this, but I think it's not significant. 
but it did actually go up again. And it's, in any case, been not a good story since roughly 2000, uh, since the recession of 2001. Uh, then the median income uh, also is an interesting story. Uh, the overall uh, median income was up. If you look at the means, it's quite a different picture. But if you look at the median, the point right in the middle of the distribution, uh, it actually went up. Uh, it, it went up a little bit for black families. Again, I think that number was not significant. It went down a little bit for Hispanics, and I think that number was not significant. But overall, it went up, and that number was significant. So a slight increase in income. We're getting close to the point where income was when it started to decline after 2001. I think that would be very important, especially if this is a recession. This could be the first time, as Richard Bevere points out, uh, this could be the first time that we've had a recovery when Median income did not recover its previous high and, and exceed it. And mostly in previous recessions, it's when, during the recovery, it's greatly exceeded the previous high. And that appears not to be happening this time, but it's very close because of this increase in income. So it's not a great story, but it's not as bad as it was yesterday. Uh, and then finally, this is a little more complicated. Uh, this is the income of female-headed families with children at the mean, at the second quintile, and then in the bottom quintile, and the solid line is the actual income of these family, female-headed families. And then the dotted line is what happens after government programs. So the solid line, so to speak, is life in the state of nature. Uh, and here you can see that at the mean, it actually went up for female-headed families, but it's stagnant uh, for families in the second quintile and the bottom quintile. And again, this is a story that we here at Brookings are very concerned about because we're concerned about the people in the bottom and second quintile. Those are the same mothers that were involved in welfare reform, either because they didn't go on welfare, whereas in the past they would have, or they left welfare and most of them went to work, some that did not, as Becky has written very nicely about. Uh, and here's the story is not necessarily encouraging, but it's not bad. Uh, but again, the direction since roughly 2000, the recession of 2001, is the wrong direction. But government programs help a lot, as you can see. Uh, even without the little ball, you can see that for the bottom two quintiles, once you take into account transfers through the tax program and through our spending programs, the families have more income. They're better off. Whereas at the median, they pay taxes. That's the way it works in America. It's called redistribution uh, or some other euphemism if you're a Republican. Uh, and uh, it, that's what we want, and that's, in fact, the way it's happening. And then finally, I think probably the, in some ways the most positive part of this story, at least on the surface, is that more uh, kids are covered by health insurance and more people are covered by health insurance than last year. The part of this story that I think, and that's a very good thing, the part of this story that is a little worrisome is that uh, once again, year after year after year, there's less coverage in the private sector and more coverage in the public sector. I'm not making any philosophical philosophical statement about whether that's good or bad, but I will make a statement about the future of the federal budget that this is a big, big problem, that not only is health care increasing at roughly twice, twice the rate of inflation, but more and more people are getting government benefits, and that this has happened again last year, even though more people do have coverage.